Now here we have a quick and dirty teardown of a Hewlett Packard 3455A digital voltmeter. Uh, the light's a bit low, the sun's low in the sky in winter and uh, it's quite bright so we're getting a bit of shadow but hopefully it's not too bad. Um, I got this at a ham fest yesterday, uh, coincidentally from the same guy that I'd also bought one of these from earlier. That one was on eBay and it works well, it seems to be quite accurate, but this one apparently is dead. The seller said that on the morning of the ham fest he turned it on and there was a bang and smoke started coming out over here somewhere. So uh, yeah, better open up and see what we can find. It, it's a bit of a worry because I believe the power supply is over here, which would be the easiest thing to fix if there was explosions and smoke. If it's here it's possibly in the analog in guard section uh, which would be fiddlier and more fragile to fix and even if it can be fixed certainly means recalibration is required so let's just take the lid off and have a quick look inside there's just a single screw at the back here and off comes the cover Okay, nothing's jumping out at me. I should probably do the sniff test to try and locate some burnt out stuff, eh? But there doesn't seem to be anything damaged and there's no particular smell coming from the power supply section, so it looks like we're going to have to take off this cover and look inside the analogue stuff. This first plate just covers the adjustments so that you can't fool with them inadvertently, though I don't know how you would do that if you had the cover on, the outside cover on anyway. <laughs> okay, let's take this off. Alright, lifting this. The meter has a pretty usual configuration for these sorts of things. There's a shielded analog section inside a, a box and a digital section out here with power supplies which are isolated between the two sections. Each one has its own individual secondary coming off of there. And the two communicate via this cable which goes down to here to a couple of opto isolators and a pulse transformer. So there's no electrical connection between the two and so all this can float relative to both the ground and to the digital section. Now again, I can't see anything in here that looks burnt out. The only slightly suspicious thing is... Get out of there. That capacitor there looks a little bit dodgy but capacitors shouldn't explode. Well, they can explode but they shouldn't that sort shouldn't explode in the smoke. Um, yeah, there's nothing obvious. So what to do now? Gingerly apply power perhaps? That's sunlight and all the shadows was getting pretty annoying so I've waited till the sun's moved out of the way and uh, I thought before I turn the power on just in case it's the last time we ever see some of the parts in here we should just go over it a little bit. So obviously we have the analog section enclosed in the shielding case. This here is the analog to digital converter. It has its own controller in there. All of HP part numbers of course, so you don't know what the bloody hell it is, but that's the A, the A to D converter. The controller for the analog is on the main board but the controller for the digital side is here HP something or other uh, yep. and one time programmable ROM or possibly some, one of those chips was RAM I should have checked um, but anyway uh, power supply obviously over there 
This little guy up the back is the ohms converter used for measuring resistance and I believe underneath that plugging into this edge connector is the voltage reference uh, which from the circuit looks to be a LM399 type thing with a heater and a Zener diode in it. Apparently you can take that out to be calibrated so it looks like you can remove some screws on the back and pull the voltage reference out, get it calibrated and then plug it back in. Over here we have the AC converter for measuring AC voltage. Now there's, oops, there's um, two flavours of this. This is the true RMS converter but a different option has a averaging converter so presumably this is true RMS is better but they still cannot see anything that uh, should have been smoking so let's plug in some power and see what happens the fuse checked out okay uh, and the rear voltage switch is, like, is set to 240 okay watching for smoke uh, I'm going to start it off at low voltage, just 26 and plug this in, see what happens nothing happening wind up the volts looking for smoke not seeing any the fans just come on so there's obviously some DC power now where was that smoke coming from? only sticking 100 volts in at the moment we're getting some carry on on the front panel I'll show you that obviously it's confused with insufficient voltage going in so we'll wind it up more and I'll just check a couple of the voltages on the DC side at least check the 5 volts Close enough. 12 volts. Close enough. Alright. Continuing to wind it up. We're at 173 volts now. 200 volts going in. Still no magic smoke. 140 volts going in. Okay, now I'll switch it off and on again just in case. Uh, it needs a good kick that it didn't get by that slow start up. Yeah. Overload. Is it working or is it not? Just while I'm in here I should check some more voltages. I'll check some voltages in the analog section. Uh, I don't know what the ground is for that. I'm going to assume it's the low input for instance plus 5 plus 5 uh, minus 15 minus 15 plus 15 plus 15 minus 24 Minus 24, plus 30, plus 30. So the volts look okay. I wonder if this thing's actually working now. Oh, there's the test button, I didn't see that. Test. 11. I wonder what that means. Okay. I have to get to the manual, look up that failure code. Just before I do that, I'll just try measuring some resistance as well. Two wire. And just shorting the pins. No. No. So we have to look up what this test code means. 11. The manual says... To set it to, I'll start with P. 
powered off. The manual says to set it to auto range and then press the test button. So power on. It's not clear whether it, it does a self test at start up or not. I couldn't get that out of the manual. Uh, so, yes, auto test. Now that should, if it works, display every segment on, but it's not. Ah, that's what you should get. But then, get that. Every time I press this, it counts down. Then you get that. You get 11. What's going on there? Every time I press a lit button, or any button, okay. Point five of a volt or five point seven volt or fifty seven volt or five hundred and eighty volts test always comes with that eleven and pushing any button makes it count down until it gets to zero then you get this and then it flips back to there again. So I think I'm going to have to do some manual reading. Okay, so that will become part of a repair video at some hot time in the future. Uh, this was just a quick and dirty tear down. And so there you have it. Let's see. HP 3455 with all the magic smoke released. There's no more left. Now if I've got, I've got a, another HP 3455. To compare that against so uh, let's see what happens when I press test on this one it's just currently measuring a voltage reference up there all these three meters agree pretty well uh, okay pressing test blank for a while and then we get all the segments on as the manual says and it just repeats that sequence so what I, what I suspect is going on is that during this blanking period it's test going through a number of tests and on the other meter it stops showing the first one that failed number 11 this one counts down to zero without any errors and then goes to the all segments on and repeats so yeah I think what the other one is telling me is that test number 11 is failing uh, I don't know if that means everything after that is also failing because I get the numbers when I press the other buttons uh, or maybe it's just what it does. So, uh, there's a, a clue. It's very handy to have this one here. I almost forgot about trying to do something like that. I hope you enjoyed that. I've got some more bits of junk to do quick and dirty teardowns on. So, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Maybe even subscribe. Catch you later.